So you're thinking about moving to the suburbs of New York City, but you're super sensitive on your commute and train times. Then you need to watch this video because I'm going to share with you a really great train line option that you probably haven't heard of before. It's connected and goes through a lot of really nice towns and has super easy access into Penn Station. Let's check it out. Hey, if this is your first visit to the channel and you're looking to learn everything there is to know about the Midtown Direct suburbs of New York City, then subscribe below and tap the notification bell so you can be the first to hear about the current market here in New Jersey and New York. Hey, I'm Jeff Massey, your local realtor, and I get calls every day and set up video chats every day with people just like you who are thinking about moving to one of New York City's amazing suburbs, and we love it. So whether you're moving in seven days or seven months, Give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email so we can help you make an easy, stress-free move to the New York City area, whether you're moving from Manhattan or from abroad. So as I discussed at the top of the video, I'm going to share with you a really interesting train line option that gets you out of the city and has amazing commute times into Penn Station. So let me jump into the screen so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so you're probably surprised. This is a map of New Jersey. Well, you've got three options if you're looking at the suburbs of New York City. You've got New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Now, I've lived in all three, I can proudly say, and New Jersey's where I currently live, so I can help you the most there, and I have a lot of knowledge about Brooklyn, a little bit of Long Island, and of course, Connecticut, where I grew up. So, the purpose of today's video is to show you one specific line on this map that really gets to amazing commutes, and it goes straight into Penn Station. So what I wanna show you first is, if we zoom in here on Penn Station, and apologies because I'm doing this on a web browser. If you look here right, let's go in a little bit more just to kind of get the story across. You'll see there's six, I believe there's six, one, two, three, four, five, six lines that go directly into Penn Station. The other lines do a little bit of a dance. You'll see these, there's these three lines over here where my mouse is and there's this yellow line these go into hoboken so they're not technically direct trains you'd have to switch at secaucus junction and within these six lines that go straight into new york into penn station i'm going to focus on two of them i'm going to focus on the two green ones today uh, in other videos maybe we'll start to talk about some of the other lines but this one i really like because this is the morristown line the dark green is the morristown line and the light green is the Gladstone branch line. These two lines we call the Midtown Direct area. And of course, anything that goes straight into the city is technically, I guess you would say Midtown Direct. But what I really like about these is you've got some super fast train times and we're gonna focus on Orange, Highland Avenue, Mountain Avenue. We're gonna go right through here, all the way out to Morristown and we're gonna also go out to Berkeley Heights within those those border towns that I'm talking about, Morristown to Berkeley Heights to Orange, you've got train times that range between 30 minutes and an hour commute. That's from station to station. Obviously, if you live within a certain distance to the train station, you have to get yourself there. And then depending on your commute from Penn Station to wherever your office is in the city, that's going to be another added time. So those two pieces plus the train add up to your overall commute, obviously. Okay, so before we jump into the map, I just wanted to show you this breakdown of the, the cities that I was telling you about so you can see the best times that work for each location. Now, I created two columns. So one is the best time that's going to get you into Penn Station by 8 o'clock, and then the other one here is the best time that's going to get you into Penn Station by 9 o'clock. Well, within that extra hour. You can certainly go earlier or later, but I figured for most people commuting, they're probably gonna wanna get to Manhattan by eight or nine, and then be at their desk by like 8.30, 9.30, depending on how far they need to go. Hopefully you live near, but you work near Penn Station, and you can go really quick. And let's just focus on eight o'clock. Um, you can always pause and look at nine if that's more interesting to you, but rather than making the video extra long, let's just focus on eight o'clock. So orange is the closest one, and this is actually an order of distance. Orange is the closest 32 minutes, but actually you'll see here, Maplewood surprisingly has a really good time. You can get there in 31 minutes, even though it's further away. So they do have these 
um, express train versions that, that stop at, at fewer stops to get you into the city or even faster. So you'll see, and on the channel I've got videos on most of these cities and towns. Maplewood has one of the fastest commute options, which is really cool. Um, Milburn, 36 minutes. And then as you get past that, you're getting into the 40 minutes. So between Milburn and Orange, you've got like a 30 minute commute. Now you'll notice Highland Ave and Mountain Ave, they actually go up even though they're closer than South Orange and Milburn. Those are kind of smaller stations that the trains go, tend to go through them more. So they're, they're more like local stops, if you will. So to get a slightly quicker time, you might want to end up going to say South Orange, even though you might live closer to Mountain Station. It's a little tricky, but we'll show you on the map a little bit further. So after, after Summit, you're getting into the 40 minutes. And then between Chatham and Morristown, you're going between 50 minutes and an hour. Uh, New Providence, we'll look on the map, that goes on to the Gladstone branch, these two down here in green. And those are the last two that really can get you in under an hour. Now, the lines keep going, but I wanted to show you these because this is within an hour, which I feel like is probably what most people are looking at. Some people, maybe they're not going in as much with COVID. They might feel more comfortable with a longer commute. That's fine. We can certainly talk to you about that privately. If you'd like to get in touch with us, we'd definitely like to help you. But these are kind of what I thought would be most helpful for the most people finding this video on YouTube. So let's look at the map. So here's here's where I was talking about in City of Orange. That's where we're starting that that um, Excel table that I just showed you. And just to give you an idea in terms of realistic. So you're coming into Penn Station right about here and the line you can kind of see this gray this thin gray line here this is where you're coming under the water and the tunnel coming out the train keeps going here and this i think is secaucus yep that's the big junction that i told you where all the lines kind of cross some will go down to hoboken and then others will keep going straight through here so then you go through here you go through newark and then you're gonna go through the Newark Broad Street side and then up towards Orange. So you start to make this hook. So this is the Morristown line and the Gladstown branch line. And we're gonna talk about each town. So let's look here. Now from Orange, you've got other options which are West Orange, if I type this in. And stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna add another column to the spreadsheet that I just showed you, which talks about average home prices in each of these towns, which will give you a little bit extra information, maybe to kind of set you on a path on where you might want to start to go down. So this is West Orange. It's not on that list I just showed you, but you'll see here when I zoom in, it's adjacent to the city of Orange stop, the Highland stop and the mountain stop. And it's not far from the South Orange stop. So if you did look in, in West Orange, I think the prices there are, I'll have to actually didn't put that on my list. So um, we can talk about that in a separate video, but um, that one you'll have to figure out parking because you're not a member of, you're not a resident of those towns that I was just talking about. So you could take the bus from West Orange, but it's so close if you're living on the Eastern side, especially other towns that, that are near there as well is Livingston, which is right next door to West Orange. That doesn't have a train access so you'd probably also have to drive over or take the bus to either South Orange or the orange the other orange stops up above and to the north now Maplewood let's go well hold on, we skipped over South Orange so let's look up South Orange so South Orange is this smaller piece here right below the city of Orange and right underneath West Orange so this town here has a lot of great options it has a really beautiful train station uh, really nice downtown park uh, Meadowland park and i've got videos on most of these towns so definitely um, look down in the description i'll list each one so you can start to learn about each one and i actually do sort of downtown tours so you can see them in kind of 360 view um, and I also generally talk about real estate in each video. So you get, again, get a sense. I also show some recent sales in the area, again, to show you what's kind of trending in those locations. So with South Orange, you, you're you up against South Mountain Reservation to your west. 
and you're following right through the train line, which goes right through the middle of the city. And South Orange actually shares a school district with Maplewood. And you can learn more about the schools at niche.com or greatschools.org. They have lots of ratings, so you can learn even more data about each school district. So if we zoom in here, this is Maplewood. And it's kind of a funny shape. It goes into South Mountain Reservation a little bit. And it hooks over on the east side towards uh, Route 78. Or actually starts kind of follows Garden State a little bit and then Route 78. But what's cool about Ma Maplewood is you have a really nice downtown um, park. Actually, if we switch to satellite view, you can see a little better. You have this really nice downtown park. And then you have a cute little downtown here. Um, one of my favorite pizza spots there, Arturo's, you could check out. There's also a private golf course right in the town, so that's kind of nice when you're driving around the city, you get access to that, those kind of glimpses of nice green green space. And again, that one has an amazing commute, 31 minutes into the city. Now, right next to Maplewood is Milburn. Now, Milburn's a funny one, and again, I talk about this in the Milburn video. Milburn is this bigger shape here. It's kind of like a trapezoid or some sort of triangle. Now Milburn specifically is this area here. Let's draw it on the map a little bit. So Milburn really makes up this kind of area here. And then this area up here is actually Short Hills. The school district, everything is all in Milburn, but Short Hills is kind of like an unincorporated village or community. It has its own census data, but it's just technically it's part of the township of Milburn. But when we say Milburn in terms of like comps, we're really looking at Milburn, this lower circle where the shopping in the downtown is. And then when we talk about Short Hills, it's really mostly residential. There are some small things like institutional things like parks and kind of clubs, but it's mostly housing. So next on my list is Summit, New Jersey. And Summit is kind of a hub of all these train lines because the two trains stop at that point and then start to branch out um, from that point. You start to go to the Morristown line or the Gladstone branch line. But Summit is a really interesting kind of diamond shape. It goes between Route 24 and 78, Route 24 on the north and 78. And again, if you check out, I've got multiple videos on Summit. One particularly is a specific map tour where you can get into all the nitty gritty. But what everyone really loves about Summit is this really cute downtown area. So the train station runs right through the middle. You have a really nice, uh, sort of more of a square park. The other one in Maplewood that I was bragging about is sort of like an organic shape park. This is more of a city square downtown. And then Springfield Avenue has all the great shops and restaurants and that's right off the train station. So if you're going to the train to jump on, plenty of places to grab a coffee and then get on the train. Really cool. And lots of parking. You have a lot of resident lots there. And you also have businesses in the area that rent parking to people that live in other towns. So because Summit has such good train options, a lot of people do go down and park there coming from other towns that are further away. So from Summit, we're gonna branch up and go to Chatham. We'll stick on the Morristown line here. Now Chatham is another tricky one. There's actually two Chathams. There's Chatham Borough and Chatham Township. And the actual train station is right in the middle of Chatham Borough. Um, so the borough is more of the, the sort of downtown area, even though it's not like dense like a city downtown, but that's the borough area. And then the township is sort of more to the west over going in between Madison to the north and Great Swamp to the west. So Chatham's where you start to get into the 50 minute commute. Now, if we go a little bit further up the line, we're just gonna follow up a little bit here. Now we get into Madison and Madison has a really cute downtown. I think it's more similar to Summit because it has like actual scale to it with buildings that you can tell were like intended to be like a downtown scale. Chatham's downtown is more two-story buildings, whereas Madison's downtown, and if I zoom in on this one little corner here, Main Street and Waverly Place, you've got like three, four, five-story buildings, beautiful architectural details, and the train station itself, actually I'm going to click on it here and try and show you, the train station itself is gorgeous. It's this gothic building, rusticated stone. 
it almost looks like a church, but it, it's a train station. It was always was a train station. So yeah, Madison, great option. And you've got a couple universities in town. You've got Drew University nearby. And uh, there's another smaller university, uh, Fairleigh Dickinson as well, is, is nearby. I think that's actually in the next town over, but it's, it's close over there. So if we keep going a little bit further, we've got Morristown. And right in between Morristown and Madison, you've got the Morristown Medical Center, which is a very, very highly rated, um, I believe it's a part of Atlantic Health System, a very highly rated hospital. But the downtown of Morristown is actually a little bit bigger than most of the other towns I was just talking about. You've got um, truly big office buildings. Yeah, even Deloitte has a big office building there. It's the main street is South Street, which is right here, that has all your shops and restaurants. You've got a performing arts center there. The Vale Mansion's a beautiful place to check out. I highlight that in the video. There's now a really beautiful restaurant called Jockey Hollow right in, in the middle of it. And it's also home to George Washington's, one of the places he stayed during the Revolutionary War. So there's lots of interesting historical facts about Morristown, also Chatham. Again, all these things are covered in the different videos, so I'll link a playlist at the end so you can check that out. But Morristown has a beautiful green in the middle as well. And if you go up here, I think it's right here, the uh, Fort Nonsense, this, this green park here is way, way up on a hill. And the view from there is amazing. You can see all the way into Manhattan um, in the distance, just amazing view. And that was one of the forts that Washington had to defend during the Revolutionary War. Really interesting stuff. So now let's swing back down where the lines crossed. So the Morris line goes up to Morristown. And then if we go over here, the Gladstone branch goes down through New Providence. So this is the New Providence downtown. And actually the train station for New Providence is right here on the border. So this is the New Providence station, but actually the downtown is over here. There's another train up here that's uh, the Murray Hill station. That's in between New Providence and Berkeley Heights, which we'll talk about in a second. But in New Providence, you have a really cute downtown, really nice um, deli and sort of meat store called Bart's. You should check that out in the video again that I've been mentioning the playlist. Um, and the homes in the area are really pretty. Springfield Avenue is the same avenue that you saw in Summit that I talked about. It snakes its way down and the homes that are along there are very beautiful homes. A lot of them are historic. So if we can continue out, this is that Murray Hill station that I was telling you about. And if we keep going, we've got the Berkeley Heights station here. And if I just type that in Berkeley Heights, you can see the shape of the town. So Berkeley Heights and then New Providence was up here. Now these towns run along the Wachung Reservation, which is this green reservation. And that's, I think it's 4,000 acres. So you've got a beautiful amenity there. There's the near the Trailside Nature Center, there's the um, the Loop Playground for, for people to run around and get some exercise, lots of hiking trails in there and stuff. And then like I said, Berkeley Heights is this kind of L shape here. The downtown is in this area. It's more of a rural downtown. It's not like Summit's downtown or Morristown's downtown. It's more like small shopping centers, but you've got everything you need right there. Stop and shop is probably your main grocery. And again, I go into detail in the videos on this. You also have a beautiful YMCA that is brand new, basically probably within the last 10 years. Also interesting, and I'll again do another description link where you've got some really cool Toll Brothers developments in Berkeley Heights and also in Chatham. Got some beautiful tours of those if you wanna check those out. Lots of things to look around and, and view on the channel if this is your first time finding me. Yeah, so Berkeley Heights is kind of the last stop I wanted to talk about because that gets you within that 60 minute range, just like Morristown was also 60 minutes. But as I was saying, if you're interested in looking at any of these areas, definitely check out the videos that I made, but also feel free to get in touch with us. We'd love to set you up on a video chat so we can learn more about your real estate needs 
and get to know what you're looking to do and your move. Maybe you're not interested in New Jersey. Maybe you're looking in uh, Long Island or parts of Connecticut. We can certainly learn about that and get you hooked up with a referral agent there. But if you are looking in this New Jersey area or in parts of Brooklyn and Queens, we'd love to help you because that's kind of the areas that we cover directly. And that said, let's get into the final piece that I was talking about. Also, if you find this content helpful, please don't forget to like, comment, and share with friends that might also find it helpful. It really helps us out and helps us discover new people to bring into the community. So without further ado, I wanna show you that last piece of the pie that I was talking about, which is the real estate prices in these areas. Now, here are the, let's see, how many did we have? We had about 13 different train stops. There were a few other towns that were adjacent to these train stops, but I'm gonna just share with you the specific towns on the train lines just to make it easier. If you're, again, if you're interested in finding out more, check out those other videos. We've got lots of data on each one. So City of Orange, I don't actually have a video on, but this one, you've got an average home price in the last 12 months of sales, 354,000. Um, South Orange, 875,000. Maplewood, that's got that really great commute pops up a little bit to 866,000. Now we get into Milburn and Short Hills. These are very sought after areas. The price here on the list is the most expensive, almost 1.7 million average price, that's average. So you've got some really big homes in Short Hills that are almost mansions. You've got some smaller homes in Milburn that are a little bit less expensive, um, but still really good options and close to the train. Summit going a little bit down in price but close to 1.4 million and chatham and madison those areas you're looking at about just below 1.2 million 1.1 1.2 million morristown you're getting a little further out now morristown on this one i actually included morristown and morris township in the data the average there is about 732,000. now if you're in morristown it's going to be a little less if you're further out where they've got the bigger homes in morris township that that price jumps up a little bit New Providence on the Gladstone line, you're looking at 853,000 and Berkeley Heights average of 742,000. So I hope that information is helpful to you. If you're interested in setting up that video call, definitely check the link below. We can set that up on the calendar and get to know more about what you're doing. In the meantime, we'll see you in the next video.